No, because my father-in-law was a corporate executive. I'm just curious about how much an amazing person like that would leave behind in his estate. Alex tried to make it sound casual. I sighed inwardly, but I kept my expression neutral and smiled warmly. I heard it's about 800,000. Alex looked surprised. My name is Mia. Alex and I have been married for 20 years, and our son moved out this year to start college. Life with just the two of us doesn't involve much conversation, but we manage well enough. On his days off, Alex forms a baseball team with his colleagues and practices from morning to night. I work part-time and spend my weekends gardening or going to yoga with friends, filling my alone time with activities I enjoy. We do different things, but it doesn't bother us, and I think we're like any other couple our age. However, an unsettling air began to disrupt our routine. It all started with a message from a friend who goes to yoga with me, attached with a photo. I'm at the station now, and isn't this Alex Mia's husband? I hesitantly opened the photo, and though it was from a bit of a distance, I could see it was Alex. He was walking, holding hands with a woman. My heart pounded loudly with anxiety. Is Alex having an affair? He said he was going to practice baseball today in preparation for tomorrow's tournament. But could that have been a lie? I think it's my husband. After I replied, my friend quickly responded, what will you do? Do you want to come here? I pondered for a while before using my phone. No, it's okay. I'll talk to my husband. I closed my phone and sat down on the sofa. I felt too drained to do anything. My mind was only filled with the thought, what should I do? I could ask Alex, but I was afraid to ask. If he is having an affair, what then? Divorce at this age, and with only part-time work within my dependence allowance. How could I possibly live on my own for the rest of my life? If I pretend I don't know anything, I can continue to live a peaceful life, as before. But could I pretend not to know? I was lost in these thoughts alone. I wondered how long I had been like that when I heard the front door open, and I snapped back to reality. It was already 7 p.m. What's wrong? Why are all the lights off? Alex turned on the living room lights and spoke with a tone of disbelief. Oh, sorry, I was sleeping. Alex laughed in disbelief and started to wash his uniform in the washing machine. Seeing this, I realized that I needed to confront him about the photo and find out the truth. I realized that Alex had indeed been exercising, and I started to think that the photo might have been a mistake. If you're tired, why don't we go out for dinner? I nodded vigorously, accepting his suggestion. Spending time together might dispel my doubts. Did you go anywhere else today besides baseball? Nowhere in particular, why? Just wondering. You said you wanted new shoes the other day, so I thought maybe you went shopping. Oh, I haven't got around to buying them yet. And with that, the conversation ended. But the Alex in front of me was the same as always, and they say there are at least three people who look alike in the world, so I decided to think it might have been someone else. Yet, once suspicion has taken root, it's hard to eliminate. And when Alex came home late from overtime or had to stay overnight on a sudden business trip, I found myself unable to shake the suspicion that he might be cheating. Unfortunate events often follow one another, and one day on my way back from my part-time job, I stopped by the supermarket to buy ingredients for dinner. I noticed my cell phone ringing in my bag, pulled it out, and stepped into a deserted aisle to see the name on the display, which made me frown. It was my brother's name. I do occasionally communicate with my sister-in-law for events like a child's enrollment or graduation, but it's been years since I last spoke to my brother on the phone. Such sudden calls from relatives often bear bad news. Hello? Hesitantly answering the phone, what I was told by my brother was that our father was not in good health. He had collapsed suddenly at work, was taken to the hospital by ambulance, and after a thorough examination, he was told he wouldn't have much longer. Our mother passed away from an illness several years ago, and since then, my father has been living alone. He had refused the offer from my brother and his wife to live with them, seemingly in good spirits. Even when I talked to him over the phone last week, he seemed to be doing well. So I was very surprised. I said I would visit him soon and ended the call, then took a deep breath to calm my trembling heart. 
That evening, when Alex came back from work and I told him the situation, he made a very sad face. I see, your father. Don't worry about home. Go and see him. So the next day I went to see my father immediately. Dad, what happened? Are you okay? Bust Mia. I suddenly got dizzy and couldn't get up. Can't beat aging. Sorry to worry you. Though usually loud and boisterous, my father spoke weakly, causing me pain. His complexion was poor, but he didn't seem to be in such a bad shape. Mia, is something the matter? Did you fight with Alex? His unexpected question made me flustered. My father gave a wry smile. You're like your mother, always enduring. We don't know what the future holds, so live as you wish. Parents are happiest seeing their children smiles. His words made me realize I wanted to talk more with my father, but he said he was tired so I decided to leave for the day. It was only about a 15 minute stay, but the fact that he was so fatigued by it made tears fall from my eyes. I sat on a sofa near my father's hospital room, waiting for the tears to stop when a man in a white coat sat down next to me. Are you visiting your father? I'm in charge of his care. Oh, I'm sorry. How embarrassing. I hurriedly took out a handkerchief to wipe my tears. Looking at the doctor again, he seemed to be around my age, with a kind face that was very reassuring. It's okay, you must have been surprised by the sudden event. Do you have any questions? With his encouragement, I asked various questions about my father's condition and what to expect in the future. Even though I repeated the same questions several times, he patiently answered them without showing any signs of annoyance until a nurse came looking for him, saying, Doctor, there you are. Thanks to him, my heart settled somewhat despite the sadness. When I got home, I remembered the conversation with my father and finally decided to call a friend who had sent me a photo. I had decided to confront Alex's suspected infidelity, which had been weighing heavily on me. I was worried I might have meddled too much. I'm sorry for making you feel bad. No, I'm glad you told me. I'm finally ready to face my husband's cheating, but I have no idea what to do. I spoke honestly and my friend laughing advised me. Actually, my husband is a lawyer. He says a lot of people come to him for consultations about divorces due to infidelity. I'll ask him for you. Hearing that, I felt relieved that I wasn't the only one troubled by infidelity. My friend quickly took action and told me that it would be better to gather evidence of the cheating and suggested using a detective agency for that. She gave me contacts for several detective agencies and even offered to go with me if I was nervous, making me feel grateful to have such a friend. Since then, I've been busy with visits to my father and working my part-time job. Around the same time, Alex started saying that his work had become busier with a noticeable increase in overtime and business trips. His actions were so suspicious that I found myself eagerly awaiting the results of an investigation. The long-awaited results came two weeks later. When I went to the detective agency, I was told with great difficulty it's clear-cut. Without feeling agitated or panicking, I was able to accept reality. Knowing the truth, the fog in my mind cleared, and I felt a sense of calm. I was shown a portion of the numerous photographs and had the past two weeks' activities explained to me. I was also told that they had obtained some audio data which I listened to, but everything was far worse than I had imagined. In the first place, baseball is only once a week. It's always for two hours in the morning, and the other members would quickly go home to their families, they said. All the other time was spent with his affair partner, and sometimes they would even wait at the family restaurant near the baseball field for Alex to arrive. It seems that he even went to the trouble of washing the practice clothes he took with him as a fake, just to cover up his lies. All the overtime and business trips were lies. It was all time made up to spend with his affair partner. From the most shocking audio data, it was revealed that Alex was discussing with his affair partner about getting a divorce as soon as he received his inheritance because his father-in-law was in poor health. It probably won't last another month, so let's reserve a high-rise condo near the station now. He was heard consulting. It seems that the recent busyness was due to him starting to prepare for a new home and making reservations for furniture and household appliances as well. Next month, there were even plans for a pre-wedding trip and I felt dizzy. The fact that my husband was waiting for my father to pass away was enough to lose any love 
or similar feelings I had left. I didn't feel sad at all. Instead, I felt a strong desire to get divorced as soon as possible. After paying a substantial amount to the detective agency, I took all the data and left it at a friend's house just in case. When I mentioned that I wanted to hire a lawyer, they readily agreed and offered to introduce me to an acquaintance who was a lawyer. However, all my money had been spent on the detective agency, and I was hesitant to touch the household finances for fear it might negatively affect the divorce, so I reluctantly consulted with my brother. My brother scolded me, saying, Why didn't you talk to me sooner? And generously lent me the money that would be needed for the lawyer. After meeting with the lawyer and talking to my part-time job about wanting to work full-time or as a regular employee, they said I could work as a contract employee, and it seemed that things would be financially manageable. Now with all the preparations in place, I was thinking about how to confront Alex with divorce. Then one midnight, I received a call from my brother. He was calling to inform me that our father had passed away. I woke up Alex and we both headed to the hospital. After a brief visit with my father, Alex greeted my brother and his wife and said to me, take your time saying goodbye and then went home alone. From there, everything happened so quickly that I don't remember it very well. There was a wake, a funeral, and greetings to relatives, leaving no time to grieve. After the funeral, my brother and his wife were exhausted from taking care of the house, discussing the inheritance and the succession. Alex, as usual, claimed to be busy with work and didn't help. On his days off, even right after my father-in-law had passed, he would go to baseball. My brother and his wife were quite disgusted, but knowing that my decision to divorce was firm, they said nothing, which I appreciated, but there was so much to do. The divorce was put on the back burner. Things didn't start to move significantly until about half a year later. Finally, all the procedures related to my father were completed and the amount of the inheritance was determined. By the way, has your father's inheritance come in yet? It's scheduled to be transferred tomorrow, but why do you ask? No, just curious. Your father was a big company manager, so I was wondering how much his inheritance would be. Alex spoke as if to make excuses. I sighed inwardly, but I kept a bright smile on my face without letting my true feelings show. I heard it's $800,000. Alex's face showed surprise. That much? Yeah. My father must have worked hard to save it up. I just got a call today from the lawyer that the paperwork is done. It'll be deposited tomorrow, so maybe we can go out for something delicious to eat. Emphasizing that the money would be deposited the next day, I smiled brightly. Oh right, that sounds good. Alex seemed distracted as if lost in thought. The day after Alex went to work, I blatantly left the passbook on the desk before heading to my job. When I returned from work as expected, the bank book was gone and in its place was a completed divorce application. I hadn't thought things would go this smoothly, so I chuckled to myself thinking, gotcha, and headed to my lawyer's office to discuss the situation. Then, without going back home, I went to my late father's house. Most of my belongings had already been moved there. What was left in the house were things Alex and I shared, and what to do with them would be decided later. It will probably become the residence of Alex and his mistress. The divorce application had been submitted. The submission had been made, and there was no reason for me to contact my soon-to-be ex-husband. The only potential contact would be from my lawyer regarding a claim for compensation for the affair, but they couldn't do anything right now as they hadn't been able to reach him. However, three days after returning to my family home, Alex called. Mia, what is going on? The bank account is empty. Where is the inheritance? And where are you? The inheritance? Do you mean mine? Why would you use it? I played dumb for now. His asking for my location meant that Alex had returned home. I had to contact my lawyer immediately. Anyway, why isn't there $800,000 in your bank account? Did you take my bank book? I was planning to change the account for my company's salary deposit and had prepared it, but it's gone. And I've been looking for it don't mess with me. It's a shared asset since we're married. Give it to me too. Tch. I don't want to be yelled at on the phone. It's painful for my ears. The inheritance is a personal asset, not shared. Besides, I've already filed for divorce, so we're not married anymore. 
don't contact me again. It's okay for you to live with your mistress in our house. Bye. I heard Alex gasp, but I hung up the phone unilaterally and immediately informed the lawyer's office of Alex's whereabouts. From that night on, there were multiple calls from Alex, but I ignored them all and enjoyed a drink by myself. After almost a year of painful days due to Sue's suspicions of Alex's infidelity, it was wonderfully peaceful to be able to relax like this. Waking up after a night's sleep, I was shocked at the sheer number of missed calls on my phone. It must be Alex panicking after getting a call from the lawyer. With trepidation, I checked the messages to find angry ones like, What's this about compensation for infidelity? If you knew about the affair, just say it. And even ones trying to be apologetic. Mia, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I want to talk things over. Without replying, I left my phone aside and went to work. Inside my bag was a new phone. This one was unknown to Alex and I would use it from now on. Knowing Alex's character, I had prepared accordingly. After a while, the lawyer said that the other party desperately wanted to meet, so a confrontation was arranged. I had anticipated this and preferred to settle things quickly rather than drag it out. We chose a family restaurant with semi-private booths for the meeting place. I had chosen the venue as I didn't want it to be out of public view. At the agreed time, Alex and his mistress arrived. It had been about a month since we'd last met, and Alex seemed a bit tired. Maybe it was just my imagination. I had seen pictures of the mistress, but it was my first time meeting her in person. Her hair was done up in a bun on her head, and she was dressed casually. She looked so young and cute that I wondered if she was a student, but I knew from the investigation report that she was 25 and worked in a cake shop. I couldn't understand what such a fluffy, cute girl saw in a 50-year-old man. Mia, what is all this about? No inheritance and now a demand for compensation. I don't understand. Both the lawyer and I couldn't help but give a wry smile at Alex's words. The inheritance is something my father left for me. And Alex, you have no right to it. The compensation is because the divorce is the result of your infidelity, which hurt me. You have to pay for that. It wasn't infidelity that caused it. It was a mismatch of personalities. You didn't initiate the divorce I did, so the affair has nothing to do with it. I feel like holding my head in frustration at such an unreasonable argument. I knew he wasn't the brightest person, but I never thought he would be this lacking in common sense. A person at fault cannot initiate a divorce. It's not about who speaks up first, having the advantage. You committed adultery. If that's the truth, you understand you're in the wrong, right? And of course, I will demand compensation from her as well. Huh? Why should I have to pay? Her cute face was a mismatch between her defiant expression and the sharp tone of her voice. Is that true? Alex looked desperately at the lawyer's face. Unfortunately, it is true. You said there would be money coming in. I haven't received a cent, and now you're telling me I have to pay. I'm going home. I'll divorce Alex, so it's none of my business anymore. She raised her voice in a shout, grabbed her bag, and stormed out of the cafe. The surrounding customers started looking at our table, which was embarrassing. We know her workplace, so it will be fine, the lawyer said with a smile, causing Alex's face to pale. Actually, that girlfriend, she's incredibly headstrong. When we were having an affair, she seemed so sweet. She always smiled when we were together, and she would cry when it was time to leave, saying she was sad. Even being told about the affair, I don't know how to react. After we started living together, her cooking wasn't good, and she constantly wanted new bags and clothes. It was cute at first, but after we got married, it just became a hassle. It's only been about a month since they remarried, but Alex's complaints about her were spilling out nonstop. I realized I always compared her to Mia. You could do housework and cook well, and you always waited for me to come home without a single complaint. So, would you consider giving it another try? I'm so astonished that my mouth hangs open. I hadn't anticipated this turn of events, and the lawyer seemed utterly speechless as well. It's impossible. No, please, let's work this out. I'll change my ways. I promise never to cheat again. You said you were busy with work when you cheated, didn't you? I can't trust anything now. Alex begged intensely, repeating, please, let's get back together. Remember when my father was in danger until he passed away? 
It was about a month, but you never visited him once, saying you were busy with work. You were having an affair, even when I was in such a painful situation. After my father passed away, all you thought about was when you would get the inheritance, right? There were signs you had opened the passbook several times. You probably had planned to take the inheritance and leave with the completed divorce papers and disappear, hadn't you? As I confirm each fact, Alex begins to tremble. You probably hadn't thought everything was exposed. You had a reservation for a fancy condo, right? But too bad, since the inheritance didn't come through, you had to cancel. I suppose the old house we lived in must be nothing but agony for her. How do you know all this? I have plenty of evidence. You're probably still thinking that if you remarry me, you won't have to pay any compensation, aren't you? At that, Alex falls silent. It seems I've hit the mark. It's profoundly pathetic to realize he's after my money. If there's nothing more to say, I'm going home. Wait. Alex grabs my hand as I try to leave. Mia is the most important to me. Please give me another chance. Alex's eyes are brimming with tears, looking like they could spill at any moment. I'll never betray you again, and I'll do all the household chores. Please come back to me. Unable to keep his emotions in check, Alex starts to sob uncontrollably. Hey, stop it. It's embarrassing. Aren't you newlyweds? Why don't you talk it out together? We should each walk our paths in life. The truth is she's been cheating on me. It seems she married me for my money. Without it, I'm just an old man. The ex-husband collapses on the floor and cries, looking miserable and helpless, but I have no obligation to reach out to him. Our conversation leaks to the surroundings, and it's incredibly embarrassing to see everyone whispering. Whispering and looking at the weeping husband, I ignored the crying husband and picked up the bill. The lawyer and I then headed home. Later, because they stubbornly refused to pay the alimony, I reluctantly called Alex's parents for advice. It had been a long time since I last spoke to my in-laws, who lived far away and were incredibly shy. After thanking them for attending my father's funeral, I was surprised to find out that Alex had not reported the divorce or the remarriage to his parents. The in-laws were shocked by the news, and the mother-in-law was so distressed that she took to her bed. They didn't know what to do and gave me an unreliable response, so I gave up on counting on them. However, the next day, Alex's father brought his brother to visit him. Unlike his father, Alex's uncle was an exuberant man who talked and laughed a lot. I remember Alex complaining to me about how tough he found his uncle, especially when the relatives gathered. Thanks to the appearance of this powerful helper, I don't know what happened, but they agreed to pay the alimony. Alex's uncle also decided to take him back to the countryside. Alex's father tearfully apologized to me for this decision. The in-laws, who were now over 80, promised that since they had no income, they would have Alex work at a relative's factory nearby and pay me the alimony under their supervision. As for the woman Alex had an affair with, she had unilaterally served him divorce papers and disappeared. But since I knew where she worked, I had no choice but to contact her workplace. I was yelled at not to contact her workplace, but I spoke with a woman claiming to be the manager, and she told me an astonishing fact. Alex had been saying that she was cheating on me with the manager's husband, who was just getting ready to file a lawsuit. Rest assured, we won't let him get away, she said. And true to her word, a few months later, the compensation was deposited into my account. When I went to the cake shop to say thank you, the mistress was no longer there. As expected, she had been fired from the cake shop, and although she had wanted to become a pastry chef, it seemed unlikely now. She was working multiple jobs to repay the settlement and was said to be seen going to a nearby construction site at this time of day, the manager informed me. Out of curiosity, I took a brief look, and there was the mistress, with her cute face sweat-drenched without any makeup, being scolded by an older man while working. With compensation due for two parties, she must be burdened with a significant amount of debt. I don't know how many years it will take her to repay it, but I think she got what she deserved for destroying someone's family. When I told my son about the divorce, he was very surprised, but he said something like, It's your life. Do what you want. Which was a relief. What I was most worried about was how my son would take it. And now, as I'm about to turn 50, 
I thought I would never be involved in romance or remarry, but recently there's someone I've started to care about. He's the doctor who took care of my father on his deathbed. Every time I visited the hospital we would talk more, and he had a very high level of likability. After the divorce, while wandering alone in a shopping center, I happened to meet him, and we started talking. It turned out that the doctor was also divorced, and finding ourselves in similar situations, we hit it off even more. We've had dinner a couple of times, and I find his company very comfortable. I don't know what the future holds, but I still want to try my best to find happiness. Did the luggage for mom and my sister arrive? From today, we'll be taking care of both of them. You should do as I say without any complaints. Got it? My husband, who can't forget his life with his beloved mother and sister Catherine, suddenly did something outrageous without my permission. When he said, I'm going to visit my parents' house for a bit, and didn't come back for nearly two weeks, I never imagined he was preparing to move them in. Even so, I wonder if my husband really has the means to support those money drainers. I was truly puzzled. Well, no matter what my husband says, I have no intention of changing my mind. Yep, the luggage came, but I threw everything away. See ya. What? My name is Lily. I'm a 34-year-old remote worker. After marrying James, I resigned from the company where I'd been working since high school graduation. And now I diligently work from home every day. Working from home suits me better than I thought, and I find it enjoyable. However, no matter how hard I try, James never praises me. James isn't even interested in what I do. Although we've only been married for three years, he shows no enthusiasm for starting a family either. Sometimes I wonder why I even married him. Sigh, is married life really this boring? I quit my job because he told me to. And now I work hard doing household chores every day. I, full of dissatisfaction, cannot vent these frustrating feelings and spend my days in torment. The only thing James is interested in is his mother and sister Catherine. James, who grew up in a loving family, suddenly did something outrageous without my permission. When he said I'm going to visit my parents' house for a bit and didn't come back for nearly two weeks, I never imagined he was preparing to move them in. Even so, I wonder if my husband really has the means to support them financially. I was truly puzzled. Well, no matter what my husband says, I have no intention of changing my mind. Yep, the luggage arrived, but I threw everything away. See ya. James, who grew up in a single mother household, has always shown an unusual degree of care for his mother since the beginning of their relationship. Next week is mom's birthday, so I need to go buy a gift. Lily, are you coming with me? I'm thinking of giving mom a wallet as a present this year. What? Buying another gift? He just bought one recently. Just the other day, it was Mother's Day, and he celebrated it grandly and had just bought an expensive gift. But James kept repeating the word mom every time there was an event. I also cherish my parents and have given them presents for their birthdays. So at that time, just thought, oh, I see. However, apart from birthdays, there were Mother's Day, Labor Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas. He prepared gifts and made her happy, even on New Year's Day and when he got his bonus. I didn't dislike James's love for events, but what struck me was that events like my birthday and our dating anniversary seemed insignificant to him. Hey James, do you know what today is? I asked James who had forgotten my birthday, and he responded, huh? Today? What was it? Mom's birthday just ended. And my sister's birthday is next month, right? Sorry, I've forgotten. In that manner, he had never prepared a gift for me. I felt lonely, or perhaps frustrated. Such emotions welled up from the depths of my heart. But I thought it was unreasonable to get angry. So I held back at that time. Today is my birthday. Oh, I'm so sorry. I completely forgot. I really am sorry. I thought, if he's unapologetic, maybe it's okay to break up immediately. However, seeing him genuinely remorseful, I forgave James. Not that he gave me any gifts, but he brushed it off with a single sentence. I forgot this year, but I'll be prepared next year. The only thing he gave me that year was a shortcake sold at the supermarket. Moreover, the cake had a discount sticker on it, indicating that it was close to its expiration date. Since we have it, let's eat it together. 
Even if it's half price, if we eat it now, it shouldn't upset our stomachs, haha. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. As time passed, despite various uneasy feelings, our relationship continued. And we decided to get married when I turned 31. Although we had agreed that I would continue to work until we had a child, I soon realized that what we had initially discussed was all overturned, and I found myself doing everything James said. Nevertheless, thinking of the future when we would have children, I wanted to save as much as possible. So I somehow persuaded him and started doing remote work. James, who was very conscious of the eyes of those around him, seemed to want to boast that he was providing for the family. He began to say things like, Just to be clear, don't tell anyone you're earning pocket money at home. And if people think you're doing that, they'll think I don't earn enough. As my earnings gradually increased, James stopped contributing to our living expenses entirely, since I didn't demand it. As a result, my dissatisfaction grew, but James cherished Catherine just as much as he did his mother, maybe because he had been pampered by the two women throughout his life. By the time a year of our marriage had passed, it felt like he cherished them more than he did me. When Catherine got divorced and moved back to her parents' home, James started to frequent their home, and naturally, our relationship deteriorated. James, who always stopped by his mother's house after work, started saying things like, I had my mom's homemade meal today, so I don't need dinner, and your cooking is different. Mom's taste feels like it fills the heart with energy. He began to constantly compare my cooking with his mother's. On weekdays, he would have his meals at his mother's house, and return home. And either Saturday or Sunday, the two of them would visit our home and relax as they pleased. This became a daily routine. As time passed, Catherine's tone of voice began to resemble that of her mother's. Hey Lily, what's so fun about doing remote work every day? And if you want to earn some pocket money so badly, you should discuss it with James and get a job outside. Haha, <laughs> nowadays it's totally normal for both partners to work. Well, I do want to work outside, but James won't allow it. I merely answered Catherine's question honestly, but later on I was lectured by both my mother-in-law and James. Why would you say unnecessary things in front of my sister? Didn't I tell you before not to talk about things that aren't needed? Exactly. This is why I dislike brides who can't keep their mouths shut. I had hoped for a bride who's more tight-lipped and smart, but you're such a disappointment. Please refrain from saying or doing anything else that would hurt James. No matter what I did, I was always treated as the bad one, and my opinions were never heard. However, not long after, James's behavior towards me changed. James began behaving strangely. As usual, after returning from work, James suddenly said, I'm going to visit my parents' home. I might not be able to come back for a while, so take care, okay? I did sense that he had been lost in thought lately. I assume something might have happened with his mother and sister. What happened? Is it an emergency? Are you okay? Should I come with you? I had a bad feeling, so I offered to accompany him, but he replied, What? You being there won't solve a single problem. If you must know, keep the house tidy. You're a full-time housewife, so you should at least do that. And that's how he answered back. And with that, James left the house. It seems he goes from his parents' house to work and vice versa. He sends me an email once a day, but his tone seems oddly high-spirited. He didn't seem to think about how I felt being left alone. If he loves his mother and sister so much, he should just divorce me and live with them. Why do I have to silently balance work and housework like this? My frustration grew, and I felt an overwhelming urge to leave the house right away. On top of that, during the day, I'd get what seemed like harassing calls from Catherine. Hey Lily, our family is about to have a big event. Do you know about it? She would say these things while laughing. Every single day she would call at the same time and say whatever she wanted. What on earth does she want from me? That's how I felt. Initially, because he rushed to his parents' home, I thought maybe my mother-in-law had fallen ill or something. But it didn't seem like any emergency at all. They just seemed to be having a good time together, which made the situation even more puzzling. More importantly, when is James coming back? He said he'd just go to his parents' house for a bit, but now I have no idea when he'll return. That's something we'll know in a bit, he said. 
you just need to wait patiently. Though if you cry later, we'll just laugh at you, you know? Even though she called me, Catherine ended the call one-sidedly after saying her piece with Asha. Honestly, I've had enough. I had reached my limit. I can't find happiness being involved with these people. I should end it all. With that thought, I prepared the divorce papers, ready to end my relationship with James. On a day off, I reached out to James. Hey, can we talk? It's something important. So, I would like to discuss something important face to face. Please respond by the end of the day. I sent that message, and even though he read it, there was no reply. Shortly after, the doorbell rang and a large moving truck arrived at our home. They started unloading a huge amount of moving boxes. What is this? I can't believe this. It turns out it was a massive delivery of my mother-in-law and Catherine's belongings. Faced with all these boxes and furniture, I was speechless. Why did they send all this? What was the reason for sending these? Could it be that they are planning to live with us? The very thought of it made anger surge within me. Out of anger, I immediately called a removal service. An hour later, the house was back to its original state. And then, that's when it happened. Did my mother and sister's stuff arrive? From today, the two of them will depend on us. You don't complain, just do as I say. Got it? My husband, unable to forget his life with his beloved mother and sister, did something unthinkable without my consent. I'll just pop over to my parents' place and then not come back for almost two weeks. I couldn't believe he was actually preparing to move. Still, I wondered if James even had the resources to support those money drainers. I was truly puzzled. Regardless of what James says, I had no intention of changing my mind. Yep, I got the stuff but I threw it all away. It was in the way. I mean, I had no idea about any of this so I thought it was trash, lol. What? I could easily picture James' shocked face, even without seeing it. What do you mean? It's obviously not trash. Don't do things without asking, huh? LOL. Who's the one acting on their own here? Moving in without even consulting me? That's just ridiculous. I wonder where you have the savings to support both of them. For now I can't do it. I can't even live with you, let alone with those two, LOL. No matter what James thinks, I felt it didn't matter anymore. I wanted to leave the house and forget about them as soon as possible. What do you mean can't? We're all going back to that house now. I've already left my parents' house. Even if you say it's impossible now, there's nowhere else for us to go. Well then why don't the three of you live together? Anyway, you chose your mother and Catherine over me. That's your answer. Goodbye. With that, I hung up the phone. Afterward, I packed my stuff, got in my car that I bought when I was single, and left the house as if I was fleeing. I decided to live in a hotel until I found a new place. My parents are warriors, so I thought I'd tell them once everything settled. For about a week after leaving the house, I received phone calls almost daily. But eventually they stopped, perhaps he gave up. I also contacted a lawyer to prepare for the divorce. I had evidence of a secret James was keeping, so I focused on gathering that. Before I realized it, a year had passed since I left. And then once again I got incessant calls from James. It seems he finally woke up and realized a lot. Now it's my turn for a counterattack. Hello? It's me, James. It's Lily. Where are you and what are you doing? I got some papers from the lawyer. What do you mean you want a divorce now? I've been searching for you and waiting for you this whole time. You know? James's voice trembled as he said my name. After almost a year without much communication, it was amusing to hear him say this. That, lol, a uh, long time no see. How have you been? But, it seems like you've been through a lot lately, huh? Your mother and Catherine have exhausted all their savings. And even though we're not officially divorced yet, you're semi-living with another woman. Right? Lol, what? How did you find out? Who told you all this? Don't you dare joke about such things. I won't forgive you if you do. James seemed flustered. I must have hit the nail on the head. The truth is, ever since our second year of marriage, when James started losing interest in me, I felt something was off. Despite his sister getting divorced and returning to her parents' home, there were other weird behaviors. He was constantly texting someone looking cheerful, secretly making calls in the middle of the night, and sneaking out. 
was evident there was another woman claiming to visit his parents, but actually going back and forth between their house and his mistress. All the while I kept collecting evidence. To my surprise, after I left our home, he let his mother and sister live there while he semi-lived with a younger woman. He even promised her marriage, and despite not having a good income, borrowed money to buy her gifts. To buy her a ring. I confronted him with a divorce paper as soon as I had all the evidence. However, it seems James knows nothing about his mistress. So I decided to enlighten him with the truth. You know, even though you don't have any money, you went into debt to buy a ring. Do you really think she sees you as her number one? She claims to be a secretary, but that's a blatant lie. What are you talking about? There's no way Emily would lie about something like that. Emily genuinely loves me. She always says her dream is to have a happy married life with me. James is completely full of himself, not listening to my opinion at all. It's just like him to get deceived because of this attitude. So I told him, but did you even check the contents of the envelope? Haha, <laughs> do you really think a genuinely innocent person would claim to be a secretary and then go out all dolled up in the nightlife every night? To me, she looked like she was working a night job or something. I mean, I even saw photos of her entering a hotel with a host. Wow, what the heck is this? So are you saying Emily betrayed me? I can't believe it. After all the decisions I made trusting Emily, the audacity of him saying he made decisions. Is this really a line for a married man like you to say? I was genuinely dumbfounded. Anyway, even though I let James swim in his own delusion for a year, he didn't even try to look for me or contact me. What does he think he's saying? I actually feel sorry for you. After making so much debt and splurging on a younger woman, you end up being betrayed. That's a... And I'll also be demanding division of assets from you. Plus, I'm gonna demand division of assets from your mistress, too. It looks like both of you are now confirmed broke. Uh-huh. What's this about compensation? I'm already down and out. Why do you have to kick me like this? And as for the money you earn, it's your own right. Please just don't get involved with me anymore. I'll sign the divorce papers. Just please, James, almost on the verge of tears, begging for his life. It's laughable how he had been acting all high and mighty. And now he's crying over something like this. He's far from being manly, he's just a pitiful guy. Because, uh, probably he should lean on his beloved mother. But both his mother and sister are drowning in debt. Looks like there's no one for James to turn to. Taza? What a pity. Taza, regardless of whether you cry or scream, I have no intentions of forgiving you. Because after all, you were the one who betrayed me first. You only cared about your mother and sister, even moving in with them while you lived with your new girlfriend. That's just pathetic, haha. Well, maybe that's true. But I had my own stresses and didn't even know how to handle them. I'm truly sorry, please forgive me. If he had just apologized to me promptly, I wouldn't have been this angry. However, without consulting me, James brought his mother and Catherine to live with us, took on debt, and on top of that, he had affairs with younger women. Logically thinking, there's no way I could forgive such a despicable man. Or rather, it would be great if all of them went straight to hell. Anyway, I have no intention of forgiving you, nor do I plan to withdraw the claim for damages. To begin with, for two whole years you never contributed to the living expenses. You and your family can continue living in debt, for all I care. Serves you right. Come on, please. Just forgive me one more time, okay? We haven't even filed the divorce papers yet, so just listen to me one more time, please. Seeing his complete change to a more feeble demeanor, I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Seriously, serves you right. There's no way I'd forgive you, you know? Well, good luck! Anyway, I don't want to see your face or your family's faces ever again. Bye. Wait, hold on. Please, I admit everything was my fault. I'm regretful. Forgive me, please. I heard his pitiable cries as he begged, but I ignored them all and hung up the phone. I had collected plenty of evidence of his affairs, and I sent him pictures of Emily with various men. I demanded damages of $20,000 from James and $10,000 from his lover Emily. If they failed to pay within a month, I informed them that I would send a formal letter of the allegations to their workplaces. 
I don't know how he managed to gather such an amount, but he transferred it immediately. Emily transferred her amount on the same day. I was content with just finalizing the divorce and getting the compensation. However, what made me happier was the subsequent chaos in James's family. First, they were evicted from their $1,000 per month rental home for non-payment. On top of that, his spendthrift mother and Catherine continued their extravagant spending, leading to even more financial troubles. Their lavish lifestyles resulted in debts over $7,000. James was dumped by Emily, whom he intended to remarry, leaving him lonely. Furthermore, the three, who used to be so close, started to fall out the moment the money ran out. They might have moved to a rundown apartment, but with only James working, the other two struggled just to eat every day. Such a fitting end for them. Now that my divorce has been finalized, I'm looking forward to living a fun and meaningful second chapter of my life. I have been living with just my mother ever since my older brother got married. There were times when I was furious with my mother's attitude, but I also owed her for raising me to this point, and I couldn't just disregard her. Yet, I never imagined that she would push me away in such a manner. My mother kicked me out of the house after all the support I've given her, and my brother and his wife who orchestrated this situation will never be forgiven. I will definitely get my revenge and repay them double. My name is Mary, I'm 25 years old. I lost my father a few years ago, and my brother John, who is 10 years older, has since married and left home. So now it's just my mother and me living together. To be honest, Living with my mother is nothing but agony. As soon as I became a working adult, my mother quit the part-time job she had until then and started slacking off at home. Then she began to treat me, her daughter, like a housemaid. Hey Mary, isn't dinner ready yet? Hey, I'm out of money for this month too. Can you give me an extra $200? I'm going out today, so please clean my room while I'm gone. There are endless things if I start to remember. Some might think that if I hate my home so much, I should just leave. I've thought about it many times myself. Yet she is my biological mother, and after my father passed away, she raised me single-handedly. My brother and his wife live far away, and his wife utterly refuses to live with us, so they're not an option to rely on. Considering all that, the option for me, her daughter, to abandon my mother, just never seemed to arise. But even I am human. There's only so much I can tolerate, even from my biological mother, and there's a limit to that. Today again, I found myself raising my voice at my mother. Mom, did you take money from my wallet again? Take it. What an awful thing to say. I just borrowed it a little. There was a dress I wanted to borrow. You've never returned anything, have you? Please stop this. You're being noisy. How do you think you've lived up to now? Because of me, right? Yes, of course, thanks to you, but... Right? So this is just paying me back, right? You're a working adult, so it's natural to take care of your parents. Don't make such a fuss over a mere few hundred dollars. It's always like this. Whenever I complain to my mother, she silences me by saying, Who do you think raised you? Who do you think you have to thank for your life up to now? Knowing all the hardships she went through, I can't talk back to her forcefully. To be honest, I earn more than enough money, and I'm not struggling financially. Even after giving my mother $2,000 every month, I still have no trouble with my living expenses. However, I've always felt that I couldn't let my mother do whatever she wanted. Then one day, when I came home from work, for some reason, my brother and his wife were at our apartment. The last time I saw my brother and his wife was at my father's funeral, and since then, we haven't seen each other or even been in contact. They marry long time no see. Still looking as unfortunate as ever. My brother's lack of delicacy seems to be as strong as ever. He has always belittled me and looked down on me. John, what are you doing here? What do you mean why? Does a firstborn need a reason to come back to his family's home? Family's home? You know, we sold our actual family home when dad passed away. This apartment is under my contract, you know? Don't be so stingy, haha. <laughs> It's been a while since the whole family got together. Patty, my brother's wife, who had been listening to our conversation, chimed in. Mary, you're as harsh as ever. With that attitude, you'll never get married. That's Patty for you. 
saying such things without batting an eyelid. Just like my brother, she seems to be someone entirely devoid of delicacy. I've always had a hard time dealing with these two, so I finished dinner alone and went back to my room. My mother seemed delighted with my brother's rare visit, smiling and enjoying the conversation throughout. Occasionally, the three of them seemed to be having a good time talking about me. Ever since that day, for some reason, my brother and his wife started, started visiting our place more frequently. Not only that, they began to act as if my apartment was their home. Hold on, John. What's this about? This is my house. And by the way, shouldn't you be at work? Will you please stop? What's it to you? I'm just worried about mom. And I come to check on her regularly. You haven't bothered to contact us once since dad died. That's none of your business, is it? Anyway, I'm starving. Can you make me something to eat quickly? What's with this guy? This is my house, right? Why is he acting like he owns the place? Mary, I want to eat some delicious cake. Can you go buy some for me? With my sister-in-law's request, my mother joined in. Come on, Mary. You're off work today, right? Since you're free anyway, just go buy it already. You slowpoke? Up until now, Patty had always detested my mother, vehemently refusing to live with us, but recently, she's been getting along with her as if she were a changed person. And as for my brother, he's been displaying an attitude that seems to say, it's only natural for the eldest son and his wife to worry about our mother. They're definitely plotting something. While I'm not sure what they're up to, it's certainly nothing good. A few days later, their scheme became clear. Mary, I've reached my limit living with you, so I'm gonna end it. What? While I was doing housework on my day off, my mother suddenly dropped the bomb. What do you mean by end it? Just what I said. I'm tired of living with a lazy and useless child like you who isn't even cute. What's that supposed to mean? Anyway, that's the deal. I'm going to live with John and Patty. Patty? With John and her? I couldn't help but ask again. Those two, who had always refused to live with my mother, are now going to live with her all of a sudden? What kind of turn of events is this? Just then, my brother and his wife arrived. John, what's going on? You never contacted us and you were adamant about not living with mom, right? So what if I did? It's only natural for the eldest son to take care of his mother, isn't it? Looking down at me, my brother spoke with a triumphant expression. You're not going to have any problems living without mom, are you? It's not about that. But then there shouldn't be any problem with us living with her, right? Are you serious? Even Patty was so against living together. Why has this suddenly come up? You're persistent. Anyway, Mom's gonna live with us now. You're no longer needed. Just a nuisance. A nuisance. After you've been thrusting Mom on me all this time? I was sickened by my brother's self-serving remarks. It was clear that he and his wife were up to no good. While my mother has always been a difficult person, she's still my mother, and I care for her to some extent. I didn't want any trouble later on. I decided to warn my mother. Hey, Mom. You realize something's off, right? John and Patty, they haven't contacted us until now. Huh? What are you talking about? The odd one out is you. What, Mom? A parasite and a good-for-nothing should just get out. In that moment, any lingering family affection I had for my mother vanished in an instant. Despite all the support and help I've provided for our mother, she says such things so calmly. To think she can say such things to a daughter who has supported her own life. But they can only make fun of me for so much longer, right? They should enjoy themselves as much as they can before they face hell in a week. I've started planning the ultimate revenge on them. Understood, I'll leave right away. I told them that firmly. As soon as I did, my mother, my brother, and his wife began to converse with smirks on their faces. Good for you, Mom. Mary is finally moving out. I'm truly delighted. Now I get to live with John and Patty. I'm in the best mood. From now on, I'll take care of Mom for the rest of my life. Oh, thank you. Mother, I'm so happy to live with you. Oh, Patty, you sweet thing. The three of them carried on with their superficial conversation. Honestly, it was hard to keep from laughing. But I must not let them sense my composure. To carry out perfect revenge, I have to play it cool for now. From that day, my brother and his wife started to frequent my house. 
They treated me as if I were heir from the start and never existed. It actually worked out better for me that they didn't speak to me while I was preparing to move. And then a week later, the moving day arrived. The first thing my brother said, Mary, it's goodbye today, huh? From now on, we'll take care of mom so you can leave without worrying. Haha. <laughs> Please take good care of mom, okay? I replied nonchalantly, which seemed to dissatisfy my brother. Then my mother came over. Mary, it would be nice if you could get married soon, wouldn't it? Being alone forever, you'd be a loser in life, wouldn't you? At her words, my brother and his wife chuckled. I responded to my mother calmly. That's true. From now on, I'll live for myself, since I won't have to take care of mom anymore. Right? I don't remember ever being taken care of by you. Stop your yapping, and just leave. I'm leaving even without you saying so. Oh, looks like they've arrived. The intercom rang, so I opened the door. It was the moving company I had hired. After having them move out all my belongings from my room, I pointed to the living room and instructed the movers. Oh, and please take all the home appliances and furniture in this house, too. But the three of them, mother and the brother's couple, perfectly matched their foolish voices. Their expressions were utterly incomprehensible. The TV, the washing machine, the fridge. Oh, and this cordless vacuum cleaner, too. Also, please take the sofa, the desk, and the bed. Everything. Then my mother came at me with a furious stance. Hey, Mary, what on earth are you thinking? What? Did I do something strange? Don't play dumb. Taking all the home appliances and furniture from this house. Are you out of your mind? Then my brother, turning his face red as he was boiled with anger, came at me. Mom's right. How are we supposed to live without any furniture or appliances? Why are you trying to take everything? Leave it all here. My mother and brother ranted and raved in front of me. I realized that it was a waste of time to argue further. I informed them both. You know, are you perhaps misunderstanding something? This house and all of its furnishings, every single item belongs to me, you know? Don't be ridiculous. This is mom's house, isn't it? And the furniture and appliances were bought with the inheritance from dad. Honestly, this guy is just an idiot. As I suspected, my brother believes that our mother is covering all the expenses of the house. He's under the impression that she inherited a huge fortune from our father, and by sweet-talking her, he's able to live comfortably without having to work. Her, he suggested they live together. John, I don't know what you're misunderstanding, but everything in this house, I bought it. Didn't you know that I've been giving her $2,000 every month? No, that's a lie. You're just saying that because you don't want to let go of mom, right? I'm going to inherit dad's fortune eventually. What are you talking about? Mom has already spent all of dad's inheritance. With trepidation, my brother looked towards our mother. She was pale and looking down. What do you mean, mom? Didn't you say you bought all the home appliances yourself? That was... I just wanted to show my good side to you kids. Are you kidding me? We thought you had dad's inheritance. That's why we decided to live with you. If there's no inheritance, there's no point in living together. How can you say that? Isn't it the eldest son's duty to take care of his mother? That's what she said. That was just flattery, obviously. It was a lie just to get us to live together. My brother was enraged by the truth that there was no inheritance, and my mother was devastated by the realization that her son and daughter-in-law's kindness was a lie. They were indeed a hopeless family. It should have been obvious that there was some ulterior motive when my brother and his wife, who had been out of touch, suddenly suggested living together. If my brother had not kept our mother at a distance, he might have realized that our father's inheritance was long gone. Watching the two with a cold gaze, my sister-in-law suddenly exclaimed as if she had an idea. That's right, Mary can just live with us again. Both my mother and brother agreed. That's it, Mary. You should live with us after all. Yes, Mary. After all, you're all I have. My mother and brother suddenly changed their tune, saying whatever was convenient. To such hopeless people, I said coldly, Huh? Don't make me laugh. Why would I live with trash like you? I've decided to live for myself from now on. I couldn't care less about you. Just fall apart together, why don't you? The three of them slumped down, completely disheartened. They all got their eyes looking into the distance. Well then, good luck with your family unity. With those final words, I left the house. 
The contract for this apartment is in my name, so they'll be forced out in two weeks when it expires. Well, it doesn't matter to me anymore. A week after I finished moving out, sure enough, I received an SOS from my mother. Mary, please come back. We can't live like this. I don't know. Why don't you get that stupid couple to support you? The thing is, they thought I had your father's inheritance, quit their jobs, and moved here. Wow, really hopeless people. I don't feel like helping. I don't need a couple that's only after money. After all, I only have you, Mary. Mom, I'm busy, okay? Mary, please help me. I hung up mid-conversation and immediately blocked her number. Now, I don't have the slightest desire to help my mother. According to rumors, after being evicted from the apartment, my mother and my brother's family used up all their savings to rent a rundown apartment. Of course, my mother does not work, and it seems she fights daily with my sister-in-law. My brother works from morning till night just to get by. On the other hand, thanks to my mother being out of the picture, the money I can use for myself has increased, and I am now able to save more than enough. Having held back until now, I intend to lead a happy life from here on out.